Dakota. Lots to talk about, but we are going to start with introducing our first guest because Bobby Epstein, the founding partner of Circuit of the Americas, has some fantastic news that they shared this week, and we are excited to have him back on the show. Bobby, welcome back to Speed City. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, Sounds we... like you got a lot. You do have a lot to talk about this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> But first and foremost, let's let's get to your news. Um, tell us how you how you frame this news because I found the wording odd, but you tell us. Really, what what was odd well, about I, the word? I didn't like the word extension because it's not an extension, and I didn't like the word inclusive because I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. I only know what the contract said. I don't know what the announcement said. <laughs> what the contract says is we got five more years. There yeah. you go. There you go. That's Plain all that really simple. matters. Plain and simple. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic news. And I think that that is, I know that your team put a heck of a, a show on, but I think they, ca I think the fans, you know, brought you over the line. If there was ever any, um, you know, question mark, there wasn't ever in our minds, but uh, you must have been so thrilled. Uh, I haven't spoken to you really since the event, but to look out there and also to get the figures back on Monday morning, I mean, hats off, pandemic and all, and what's gone on for you and your team for the last two years. Uh, that must have been a huge relief. Well, I, you're absolutely right, though. It's because of the last event when you saw that turnout and F1 saw it. And in fact, hmm. uh, they hadn't been outside the paddock since the <laughs> pandemic began. And they, they went ahead and saw that Lone Star Land barbecue area and said, can we block that off and take everybody out of the paddock for a barbecue? We haven't gotten together the whole year. And they came out and then they saw those crowds and, uh, <laughs> oh, that's and, that, cool. and that welcome. And they just said, we we're not, this isn't going away. And uh, so absolutely the fans did it. And, you know, you guys have helped all, all along and supported. And I'm sure everybody on the, that listens to this show was a big part of both helping us and helping the sport grow in this country as, as it's clearly doing. Well, I remember, Bobby, on Friday, I stepped out of the, the media center and looked at the crowd on Friday and went, holy mackerel, this weekend is going to be massive because Friday looked like a normal Sunday, so we knew it was happening. But, but yeah, I, and Bobby, was it nice to, to negotiate a contract with, with that in your back pocket and all the incredible numbers on ESPN and our – all our radio numbers, the national radios are all up. So was that nice to walk in knowing all that? It was uh, certainly it was great. I mean, it, the um, we knew we were going to continue. It was just a matter of, of the route we got there. And and one of the reasons really that that things took until they did was you know Chase Carey had been running the business and in, in fairness and, and it, to them he didn't want to negotiate a contract that he wasn't going to be able to to see through. And so he waited till Stefano got in and let him then make his own deals. And that's why I think you'll see a flurry of, of activity. And you've seen several deals announced uh, was simply that the people that were going to be in the seats for many years, they should be given the chance to negotiate and, and make their own agreements. And so that's, that's why probably things didn't happen sooner. Oh, that's awesome. That answered a question I was asked the other day about why it took so long. Great explanation. Well, Bobby, I got to ask, we've seen a variety of models for new contracts come out from, uh, from, you know, the Ecclestone era to current. Can you give us some insight what your model is like, the re revenue, or is it fee-based, uh, that kind of thing? I promise there's a fee base to it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but are you, uh, all right, put it another way. Are you um, not as happy that you didn't get, I mean, you know, I, I, I see now that Liberty, obviously you've got lots of options. Everybody now jumping up and down to get a Grand Prix, but would you want it of a longer trunk contract? Uh, or is that sort of Liberty saying, you know, we might be kind of having to swap around certain events in Germany and, 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 and the US and we're still looking at Vegas. And I mean, I don't know. Was that part of the process that that instead of nine years or ten years like you had before, um, there was a it was, it was Liberty saying, you know what, we've got so many choices. Let's do five, and we can re review it after that. I think we both. I think we all agreed we were aiming for five. I mean that that was what we wanted to do, and 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 I think they were they were happy to have that, and and hopefully they have. I hope they have lots of options because things are going so well for them. But but realistically. There's not another permanent circuit that they're going to find in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> that that fits their needs. So we had we had some strength from that standpoint and from the fans showing up uh, the way they did and all the support we've had. 
Uh, and I have to tell you, everybody within F1 that we dealt with, the first thing anybody would say when we came in the room was, we want this to keep going. You've got a great thing there, and we don't want to do anything to, to damage that. And they said that constantly. I mean, they recognize, they think it worked out. And to the people that have been there for since we started, you know, more than a decade, and there's been a lot of turnover on their end. Um, mm-hmm. Anybody who's been there that long knows what we've gone through, knows the journey was, was not easy and and is pulling for us. I, I really feel like we have some good support there. So um, five years is fine. You know, uh, John's mantra on the show since we started back in 2012 has been, we got the track, we need the driver, we need the team. And quite frankly, the announcement that Mario put out uh, that you saw on Friday um, is, is music to everyone's ears because it's great to have Haas, but we know that if Andretti, Michael Andretti, that is, comes in with Andretti Autosport, there's going to be an American fanfare to it, uh, and we believe that Colton Herder is going to be tied to that, uh, i.e. that was what he was hoping to do with Alfa Romeo, um, and it didn't fall through, I and mean, that's why he put this announcement out now. It didn't fall through because of uh, financial circumstances, but that's, again, another fill for you and your team is that that, that news to the future is going to be big news for America. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> we all, we all absolutely hope so. And, and it was a, a bit of a surprise, mm-hmm. but we've known they've had interest there. I think ever, that was never a secret. And what this says is I think there'll be other teams that enter because it's been a while since F1 teams could actually make money as an F1 team. And that's what this shows is really the health of the sport right now. You know, speaking of money, the sponsors have been huh. uh, pouring into Formula One from the United States specifically. So, Bobby, did you uh, did you invite the gentleman, the CEO of Oracle, <laughs> Oracle. <laughs> uh, Oracle, out to the circuit after you hear, heard his announcement of half a billion dollar <laughs> sponsorship of the Red Bull Formula One team? The, my uh, sponsorship guy's phone definitely rang. <laughs> not, I, I, I think, you know, as, as, as one of the commentators there, I, th- I think we should start talking about naming some of those corners. Oh, we've got the big red, but I mean, Oracle, you know, Dell, Dell Dip. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's, no, but you've got to be happy also that the timing for Austin with the tech influence that has happened over the last two years. I'm an Austin ju- uh, business journal and I get a, a bit mad because they don't mention the economic value that you guys bring as much yeah. as they do with people like uh, Elon Musk and, so, and, and, others, and, and Oracle and so on. Um, do you, I think it's got to change. I mean, those guys are now going to be, Oracle are now going to say, hey, come and see you know, our, our sponsorship. Of, they're going to be doing that and I'm sure they're going to be uh, getting sweets and stuff. I mean, are you, are you noticing just being around Austin more interest from the tech companies? Yeah, the more interest. It's not just the tech companies, but it's the um, a lot of the population that came here that's that's that has had success in the tech world or have moved their companies here. I think it's it's happened very quickly, and I don't know if everyone's. I would not have noticed if I weren't sitting where I was in the sense of the amount of of inquiry we have from from corporate groups and uh, high net worth individuals that just want to have special experiences around formula one. It's been, it's been incredible. I mean, we, we knew Austin, uh, was a great place and that's why we wanted to have the track here. And, and we believed in where we lived and, uh, other people have figured it out and it's, uh, we're all better for it. You know, thinking back, Bobby, 10 years ago, the, the, you know, the first response was why Austin? And then you started, people started explaining it. You guys look like visionaries now looking back <laughs> because nobody really had, had put it all together and thought about it that way. So that it, you guys look like geniuses now. I don't know about that, but I think hopefully we look at, I hope we look at like uh, when people look at coming here, that we're one of the reasons that they, they look at Austin and say, there's some great things to do there and, and, and some fun events. And uh, it's a place I want to be a part of. Bobby, I know that over the years you've, always looked at the complex the the acres that you've got as being other potential and and that's a a smart move because you can't have a formula one race every week or a motor gp but it was great to see today a rugby advert on local tv for the rugby team i've seen ads for bold and obviously for motor gp and nascar uh during the 500 Uh, have you got plans more expansive plans i also uh, read about the uh, the the bike academy coming here um you know in support of the american moto 2 team um, so what, what is your vision, if you like, for something bigger, um, than just the motor racing? Because the complex can, can do more, can't it? Well, it can, Jonathan. And, and yesterday was a, 
exactly what you're talking about. I mean, to, to as the campus grows, we had uh, we had Superlap with hundreds of people. I think they had 300,000 people they streamed that to over the, the course of the day yesterday. Um, wow. And so the track was packed. At the same time, you had the rugby game that evening, and you had a music festival with with uh, eight or 9,000 people going on out in, in the parking lot F area, you know, with four stages. And that's all, that was all just yesterday. And, <laughs> and, and so we've really got to continue to look at what we can do at the campus and program it out. And it, it does have a, it has the platform of the track and, and, and the notoriety of formula one and MotoGP and, and those great events, but it's it's what we do with the rest of it that's going to really matter in the long run for us. And we've tried to make it an entertainment destination. I mean, the amphitheater was not an afterthought; that was right off the bat. Yeah. Our our um, our hope is we build out these car condos, and people that really get a a sense of community there, and we can build things that that go along with that. Whether that's a technology center or a brand delivery centers, or a, certainly a drivers club or a car. Uh, driving club uh, at the track will be a, something mm-hmm. coming in the not too distant future, which I think is something that we've known people wanted for a long time. And, and we intend to put an amusement park out there and a hotel and, and maybe a water park one day. And, and uh, we just got to build it out and make it a place that people want to go and make memories and have a great time. Cause that's what we're there for. I love it. And, and you know, that was one of the things I remember early days uh, there was even mention of a museum out in front of what's uh, where the amphitheater is kind of across and in, in that other lot. And, that, and that's what I think is by the time everything that you have on the, the radar for the next five and 10 years, it's, it's going to be a, the coolest destination around for just about any interest you have. And that's what I love, whether it's music, motorsports, you know, go out and watch the rugby. Gosh, last night, did you see the rugby game last night? <laughs> Stomped Utah. But anyway, sorry, not to digress. <laughs> well, Bobby, we're not going to keep you much longer. I know you guys got NASCAR coming up uh, March 25th and 27th. You guys getting ready for that? Absolutely. It looked like Daytona went, had some exciting racing. Yeah. Today, and you got a guy named, you got a guy named Austin that wins, so it can't be all bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good on it. Yeah. That was a good race, and I like the new car, and I like the yeah. way NASCAR's going. I like their new initiative. Uh, they've got a new female initiative that they're bringing some yeah, girls through. That. Uh, that's good. We've got the W Series coming here, and Miami, and Mexico. Uh, I, you know, I, I do feel the diversity in motorsport is really taking, you know, Steve Phelps is doing a heck of a job. Obviously, Domenicali now has, has put his you know, uh, stamp on, on approval uh, for, for Formula One. Moto G's coming, uh, Moto GP's coming back. You've resurfaced it. Congratulations on Mr. Panis. I think that's exciting, um, you know, for business development for you guys. Um, I, I mean, I know that it, it, it's nonstop for you, but I do feel like it's a kind of a new era uh, for, the whole, for the whole shebang. We're, 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 I agree. <laughs> it was a rough ride, but now things are really moving in the right direction. And, uh, and I think there's a lot more good to come. So we're we're finally, hopefully, over a hump and and head in the right direction and and uh, make it fun for people to come out. Well, Bobby, thanks for coming on. We're gonna let you go. I know it's your Sunday night and all that. So thank you, appreciate it, and congratulations thanks. again on the five-year deal. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. You thanks, Bobby. Thanks for- all right, see you soon. Love it.